Canis. Today our guest is Andrea Dreyfus. Um, Andrea is from northeastern Pennsylvania and she's been very much fascinated with local amusement parks and amusement parks throughout the country. It's one of my more favorite topics and it's just a fun idea, a fun topic, a fun place to go to, uh, an amusement park. Andrea's involvement in local amusement parks, um, I actually got to meet Andrea a few years back when she was in two of my local documentary projects on Rocky Glen Park and Hanson's Park, but she's a member of the National Amusement Park Historical Association. She's contributed several articles and photos. She's also, I know, traveled throughout the country visiting different amusement parks as part of the Coaster Enthusiast Group and just being a part of all the activities that there are out there in our wonderful, fun amusement parks. Today we're going to talk to Andrea a little bit about our local amusement parks, what they had to offer at one time, and just learn a little bit about why she loves amusement parks so much. Andrea, welcome to our program today. Thanks, Bob. Amusement parks. I just gave a brief introduction about your love of amusement parks. Why do you love amusement parks so much? Well, I love amusement parks for many reasons. First of all, it is a good time. You go to a park, you pull up, you see the rides. Already the adrenaline's rushing. It's great, it, it, it's, it's a great day. It's a great time for family, friends. It's just so much fun. And this area is so rich with amusement park history that I don't think at the time we really appreciated what we had. And now as the parks are dwindling and getting further spread apart and becoming more corporate and larger, now we're really starting to feel like we want that home feel. We want to stay home. We want to stay nearby. We want to have something close by to go to, to spend with our family, to watch kids grow. And it, it, it's just great. It's just a great time. How can you not have fun? About 10 plus years ago, um, I was approached by some people in our community and they said, would you remember Rocky Glen and all the great times at Rocky Glen, which was kind of my inspiration to do a documentary on Rocky Glen Park. And it's hard to believe that was 10 plus years ago. And it seems like Rocky Glen meant so much to us here in northeastern Pennsylvania. The park started in 1886, closed in 1987, so it had a 101-year history in our area. But, Andrea, tell us a little bit about what you think Rocky Glen meant to our area and your experiences at Rocky Glen Park. Rocky Glen was my childhood. Being half an hour from it, we went so many times. So many times. And I feel like, even being young, our parents just let us go. You can't do that now. I think I was probably seven. It was just go, have a good time. And we did. And we always came back when we needed to. It, it was just, it was great. They had so many amazing rides. I did not appreciate them then like I do now, but it was just, it was just a great time. It was what we did every summer, several times. We went with friends, family. We'd meet up with people there. You'd make new friends. You'd spend a day with somebody that you don't know. I don't know their name. I'll never see them again in my life, but you just had fun with these people. That, that's, that's what we did. It was great. So what were some of your favorite rides, attractions at Rocky Glen? Well, well okay, so favorite rides all. I, I can't I can't say I don't like rides. I love them all. There's something special about every one, even the ones that leave you a little queasy afterward. But classic pull up to Rocky Glen, we had to go on the Scrambler. You had to go on the Scrambler. You had to go on the Tilt-A-Whirl. That, that was, that, for us, that was the classic. And of course, the antique cars. What a great layout for those antique cars. So happy once I became tall enough to actually be in charge of that car myself. And let me tell you, what a hot mess. What a hot mess. I got stuck on a wall and held everybody up. They had to come and move the car. I, I don't know how I did that. Maybe I was the only one who ever did that. But toward the end, you know, they, they installed the Sea Dragon. That was great. That was the first time I was ever on a ride like that. That was so much fun. You couldn't even decide where you wanted to sit. In the center, at the end, a little scared to sit on the end at the time, but it was just, it was so great to see the rides change, to find out that they had a new ride, to be upset when maybe they got rid of something that you really enjoyed. But all in all, it was just a great park. And to hear people talk about it and the concerts that they went to and all the different activities over the years. And it's just so special to so many people in the area too that when I talk to people about it, you can see the, the love and passion and amazement in their eyes too. And I think that that's really special if that if a park like that could 
embrace so many people who have so many different interests and hobbies and talents and, and they just all loved it. Something that can spread across so many generations and so many different people. Everybody, everybody just loves it. I, I know in your, in your intro I, I mentioned that you're a part of a national uh, historical organization involving uh, amusement parks yes. and I'm looking at an article here that a national article written for the Chronicle magazine from the industry spring of 2020 and I see you wrote an article about Rocky Glen so you know 20 30 years after Rocky Glen is closed it's still an important park um, not only in northeastern Pennsylvania but throughout the United States because this article is a national maybe international magazine yes. tell us a little bit about your writing of the article and how you felt that we're gonna highlight something of northeastern Pennsylvania an amusement park throughout the country, the world. I really enjoyed writing the article because I really like rides. So to look and see where some of the rides were re relocated, if they were able to survive, and to you know become more familiar with the ride manufacturers in the years that they were built, it, it was it was really neat because you're you're trying to put this back together in your mind like I went on this ride oh I love this ride we always did this we always did that and I remember it was painted this color then it was painted another color so I was really focused on the rides first and then again interviewing people talking to people and they're just talking about all these great concerts they went to and and this is where they met their the love of their life and they're still married and to hear all these great stories and it was so hard to really condense that into an article all the feelings and emotions that you have you know personally and what other people have portrayed to you and do you want to stay focused industry related these are the rides this is what they had do you want to be more emotional and say you know all these people just had such an amazing time and they met their spouses and they took their children there and now they're disappointed they can't take their grandchildren there. It, it really opened up a whole new aspect of parks. And even just talking within my family, I didn't know what my parents were thinking when we went to the parks. It was just, you know, we were all there to have a good time. But then to hear some stories like, oh, remember when your dad went on this ride with your cousin and, you know, they lost their hat or sunglasses and you laugh because, yes, that happens, but you just didn't know it at that time. It's, it's, it was great to open so many different doors and, you know, really put something together and then have people offer you pictures and realize you do have some pictures that you didn't even realize you had. And, and then, I don't know. It, it's just been, it, it was great. I really, really enjoyed writing that article. It came out great. And when I read it, I feel like I'm transported back to that time. And I think a lot of people through their memories of Rocky Glen have been transported back there through the many years of all the great fun times at Rocky Glen. Um, just looking at the idea of Rocky Glen Park itself, I mean, how does the, the national amusement park community look at northeastern Pennsylvania and, and again the parks that we had in our area and we'll get into a couple more of the other parks in a few moments but in Rocky Glen specifically just because it had the longest history in our area and was probably it was the largest amusement park in our area so how does the national community amusement park community look at us well you just said two big things number one it was big and number two it stood well till its demise the test of time so yes it is pretty spectacular in size alone it is it was very large it was you know built into the natural landscaping so it really had a unique layout to it um, and of course this area with coal mining and railroading this was a trolley park and this is what built this area these trolley parks were created to entertain people on the weekends who worked all week and it put the trains and the trolley cars and all the other types of services to use that would have not ran on Saturday and Sunday. So it, it, really, it really shaped this area and the amusement park industry in this country is really shaped by railroad and coal mining and of course the trolley parks because that's those are the bones, that's what started it. So this is one of the iconic parks to represent that. Just because of its size, it wasn't, and not to downplay any other parks, believe me, uh, there, there were a lot of parks. If you look at the history of Pennsylvania alone, there are th th hundreds of parks. This area alone, so many parks, so many ownership changes because they were either owned by the railroad or owned by a coal mining company or some affiliate thereof. It, it was really, 
most of them were smaller, but they all had dance halls, they all had swimming, they all had really great things for people to do. And Rocky Glen just managed to grow and stay. And they weren't affected once the trolley stopped running and highways were put in and people weren't, were now driving. Now they're driving to Rocky Glen Park. They're not relying on the Laurel Line. They're driving there and they want to drive there. So that really was one of the unique things about Rocky Glen Park. In my research through the years of Rocky Glen, the one thing that really fascinated me was the Laurel Line, as you mentioned, the trolley system. And I've seen some statistics from the late 20s in which up to a quarter of a million people were going to Rocky Glen in a season. And then, of course, we fast forward through the years, and then you just look at all the activities and things that went on down there. And I'm always fascinated by the amount of major celebrities that appeared at Rocky Glen through the years, the Dorsey brothers, and uh, you know, even up into the 80s, Bon Jovi, Eddie Money, and things right. like that. Um, so again, you know, we see that history. I mean, let's talk about other amusement parks. Okay. Uh, Hanson's Park, which oh. was located in the Harvey's Lake area. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your experience or in dealings and knowledge of Hanson's Amusement Park. Well, Hanson's again, trolley park. It, it had a train running right through the roller coaster. I have a piece of the roller coaster at home I did not bring today because, you know, tetanus in the nails. Um, but now, ha Hanson's... So you carry around a piece of an amusement park with you from a, a roller coaster at Hanson's Park. Do I understand that correctly? Yes. You're I, an enthusiast. Okay. I have a few <laughs> roller coaster pieces from a few parks. Um, yes, Hanson's, again, a great park, huge on a lake. So it attracted so many people. For some people, that was their vacation, equivalent to people going to Disney Universal or on a cruise today as their big vacation. Hanson's, a day trip to Hanson's and Harvey's Lake, this was, this was the best thing to do. So yes, Hanson's is, you know, and it's a family, it was family owned, it had a great location. It had a great roller coaster and it had a great collection of kitty rides it just people flock there it, it's unfortunate with you know insurance and the other reasons that they just had to close and and they didn't even have a big celebration to end their season there was nothing and you know i i think for a lot of people that the, it was just people took for granted because it was always there like most other small parks it's just going to be there next year it's just going to we're just going to do this this is what we do and it's gone so you have a piece of the, the roller coaster that was at Hanson's Park. Yes. Obviously, you rode the, the roller coaster at Hanson's Park. Unfortunately, I did not ride the roller coaster at Hanson's okay, Park. Okay, so you and still it, have a piece of its history, yeah, though. Yeah, it's a little sore spot, but... So tell us a little bit about Angela Park, um, located in Drums, Pennsylvania, probably about 45 minutes from Lackawanna County, um, north of Hazleton. Tell us a little bit about it, Angela Park. Angela Park? Uh, great little park we went it like clockwork every summer we had family picnics there church picnics we we went every year now that is one park where i really became a repeat rider on rides so some of your favorite rides at angela park tell us a little bit about them the valley volcano that is my first wood roller coaster that i power rode power rode we would pull into the station, check the lap bar, and go right back out. We just kept, we did not get off. I, the the ride op had to want to kill us. We just kept going. We did not want to get off that ride. That is the first time I really just kept riding a ride and not getting off. And I think that was really the moment in my life that I thought I re I I don't just like parks. I love parks, and that was it. Going on that. It just over and over again. It was, it was great. We had so much fun. One of my favorite rides was was the train ride at, at yes. Angela Park, and it was such a unique ride in that you were in the park, went through a tunnel, and then went out into sort of like a stream into some wooded mm -hmm. area, and then you came back around the park, and it was a larger train ride than in most amusement parks. Yes. Do you have any stories or remember the train ride at Angela Park? I do remember the train ride. I, I really enjoy that, and you're right. It would go through the parking lot, and there were some picnic groves, and you'd go there and go through the trees in the forest, and you'd see the stream, and it would loop around. It would have the tunnel, and there was the miniature golf course there, where if you were really talented, you could hit the ball through that yellow loop and hit the train at the same time. 
I know this. Well, it's another fun, <laughs> fun image and fun experience. Um, you mentioned the idea of riding the roller coaster at Angela Park, and it was kind of a defining moment for you with amusement parks. Um, I know you belong to one of the coaster enthusiast type groups, and you've had some experiences traveling throughout the country riding coasters or something. Yes. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I really have uh, rides that, again, I didn't appreciate, like maybe most people have, parks I didn't appreciate here at the time. I do miss and I you know I want to relive and you can't relive something that's not there so I have been creating lists of parks and rides and where they're located if they were relocated or mirror image rides thereof in Rocky Glen Park has a mirror image roller coaster okay. out in Ohio out in Ohio so so you know, if that, someone that, wants to recreate the ride at, absolutely. at, at Rocky Glen the roller coaster <laughs> the they have to go image. to Ohio they have to go to Ohio but that is the sister coaster it's the mirror image so yes but i have i have done some research and i have been spending the past several years every summer going to different parks and trying to experience these rides that i either miss or i never really got a chance to ride so that that's what i've been doing and it, it has been great and so much history behind some of these parks and it's great because these are old well-established parks and they wanted to take these rides and now they're there and it's great. It, it is really, it's, it makes a great vacation. I noticed in your background, I didn't mention it, but um, you, you went to, uh, to college in the Bethlehem area, Allentown area. Yes. So you would probably spend some time at Dorney Park. Tell us a little bit about your stories about Dorney Park, another park that had a long history established I believe it was in the 1880s and is still right. operational and everything but tell us a little bit about Dorney Park. Yes, the I yes, Dorney Park I went to college right nearby. I actually watched them build Steel Force and at the time it was one of the tallest roller coasters I had ever seen and I just remember looking at my dorm room saying, "Wow, that the the top of the lift hill comes to a point. How high is that?" because at the time, most coasters were only 70, 80 feet tall, and this was over 200. This looked immense. And it looked like it came to a point, and they had the beacon light for airplanes on top, and you just think, wow, I cannot wait for this to be built. But, you know, even going back, my, my first time at Dorney Park was in the 80s, and it was not a corporate park and their clown mascot was Alfundo, and he overlooked you. <laughs> and yeah, it's a little on the scary side, but you know, most clowns are. It, it was a great park. What great rides. Journey to the Center of the Earth. They had a, I believe it was a Traver swing. You sit in the rocket ships and go in a circle. Just something so simple is really just a great ride. And it, it's something you don't see too much anymore at parks because everyone is really trying to get the next biggest, best, thrill and a ride that only goes up 20 or 30 feet goes in a circle at a nice pace isn't isn't what's being built you know now you have to go up in the air 400 feet and you know 36 g's and mach 12 and that that's that's what's going to pull people into parks not the classic rides but dorney is great i mean they they were taken over they're part of Cedar Fair, and they really still have some classic feel to it, including now that they've just put in bumper cars again because that was an old ride at the park. People want those old rides. People are, are they are looking for that nostalgia, especially local people. That's what's going to bring your local people into a park is nostalgia. So we also have another amusement park, Hershey Park. Do you have any experiences or stories to relate to us about Hershey Park as we try and cover parks that are relatively close to northeastern Pennsylvania? Absolutely. Who doesn't go to Hershey Park? <laughs> it, it, it's great. And, you know, they, they're... <sighs> Hershey Park right now is really, roller coaster-wise, ranked right behind Cedar Point. They are the coaster capital of the north. They really are. They, they just keep increasing, taking up property, building, but they're still keeping true to family, family fun. It, it's really a resort feel now with our hotels and 
it, it's, it's turning into like a week long vacation, no longer hop on the trolley, spend the day, come back home. It's really turning into a whole week vacation, but it, it's still so classic because they have so many rides that they're, they're just never going to replace. They have a great pony cart ride for kids and, and you don't see that in too many parks anymore. A pony cart ride, a kitty whip, a kitty scrambler. Like these are, these are the rides when you take your kids to parks, this is what they're gonna wanna go on. And then in five or 10 years, they want the bigger rides and, and we gotta start them young. But you know, it, it's really, it's turning into a big resort and it's really great. And on top of all that, they have the concerts, they have the big names down there. So yeah, they've, you know, they're evolving, they're evolving nicely. It is, it's corporate, but they're evolving nicely. So you have a situation in which you have a steel coaster and a wooden coaster. Now, tell me your personal feelings on it and tell me about what the amusement park community out there thinks of steel coasters versus wooden coasters. Well, I don't know if I could speak for everyone, well, just in but general, I could speak for most when okay. they say wood coaster. Okay. That, that, that's, that's the classic because in this area, in, in, in this country, roller coasters came to be because of switchback railways and gravity railroads. So that, that was the start, that was the basis. In Russia, they had ice slides. Uh, they still do, it sounds a little scary. But you know, it, it was the railroads. It was on the weekends, they would just let the gravity railroad fill up with people and go down the hill. No, no form of safety, nothing. If you lean over, you're falling out and chances are no one's ever gonna see you again. So yes, the wood coaster is the classic. Um, the noise, the clicky noise going up the hill. You know, you hear that, the adrenaline starts pumping. It, it, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be 300 feet tall. There are some amazing coasters that are well under 100 feet. Knobles, Hershey hat. I mean, this is, this is iconic. When, when you see something that would indicate an amusement park, whether it be a sticker, an advertisement, you're walking through a craft store and they sell, you know, for scrapbooks, there's always a roller coaster, a roller coaster outline depicted, and it's always a wood coaster. That is so synonymous with amusement parks. That, that is, you pull, into an, you pull into a parking lot, what do you usually see? A roller coaster. The wood, a wooden roller, a roller coaster. It's usually the centerpiece of a park. Knobles changed that up a little bit. <laughs> I would think, like, if you look locally, of course, going back to Rocky Glen, because, again, it was so prominent here in northeastern Pennsylvania, but... You know, you had the million dollar roller coaster at Rocky yes. Glen and you know, it had a short lifespan and from my research and everything it was because the wood had to keep constantly getting replaced and it was so expensive right. to replace all that wood on this massive coaster. And so how did that play? Do you think the economics for amusement parks look at having to rebuild the, the wooden coasters or is it just the thrill of I gotta get taller and metal could allow that to happen more? What is, what is your thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, the, the, the steel coaster definitely requires less maintenance from that aspect. You still have to maintain it. But you have prefab pieces. You have your steel. The chance that that steel has to be replaced is not nearly as much as wood. Usual, wood coasters usually, probably several times throughout the season, have to have work done, wood replaced. A lot of times the coaster could still run when it's being replaced. I mean, we've all seen somebody screwing something in somewhere and you think, ah, eh, should it go on it? It's okay. But yeah, no, the definitely with a steel coaster, you have a more streamlined, less footers to worry about. A wood coaster, when you, when you start going up higher, you're taking up more ground space. A steel coaster, you're not taking up the space in the park. So yes, you can go up higher. It's more streamlined. It is more cost-effective maintenance-wise and you, you do get the steeper hills that can withstand more force. It, it, it is very different. Right now, um, one of the newest trends in roller coasters is you know the hybrid where you would have, or you would take a wooden structure and now they're putting the steel overlay on it. So now they're taking these, what was once a, 
nice airtime wood coaster is now going upside down and doing loops and doing corkscrews and hanging upside down mm -hmm. for two or three seconds and they can do this with the overlay. Uh, Rocky Mountain Coasters is doing this. They're, they're taking rides and they're making them 2.0 and you know it, it's really pushing the envelope. So if we look at northeastern Pennsylvania again, and we had so many amusement parks in our area, Rocky Glen, Hanson's Park, Angelo Park, we spoke about Sansui, we didn't get a chance to talk too much about, or to talk about Sansui, but what do you think we lost here in northeastern Pennsylvania when all these amusement parks pretty much closed in the 80s and we don't have that element here? We have Knobles, of course, but that's still an hour and a half, give or take, drive or something. What do you think we lost in, in our area with the loss of the closure of the amusement parks? We lost the close-knit close community family orientation where you didn't have to plan ahead. You could if you wanted to, but if you just said, hey, tomorrow, let's all meet at this park. And in 20 minutes, everyone was there. And you, you could take your food, and you can have a picnic, and you can spend time with your family. And you could bring the grandparents who didn't want to go on rides and just wanted to walk around and have a good time. You, you lost that family structure and it does require you to do more planning, put more money aside and does change the whole dynamic of the park and the feel where you, you're not just going somewhere to do something, you you now have to plan and you want to get your money's worth and you want to do everything because you don't know when you're going to be back because it's not just down the road and you're not going to always be with your family like that. So I think it really impacted family and community by losing these parks that we you just went to for something to do. I think I know the answer to this next question, but I'm going to ask it. So what do you think the chances are that an amusement park would succeed again in Northeastern PA, and do we need it? Of course we need it. And yes, I do think it would succeed. I think that People want to go back to that. People want to be close to their family. They, we're, so, we're so separated anymore with technology where we think we're close, but we're not. You know, again, people sit in the same room and text each other. They send emails. What we really want to do and what we need to do is actually get back to going and standing in line for a ride and talking to the people around you and then finding out you have similar interests or you live near each other or you have some of the same friends and now you have somebody you're spending the day with and you're enjoying this park and you're sharing it with your family and I, and I think that that is really important and I, yes, if, if a park were to pop up tomorrow, say where Rocky Glen is located and it was with the same splendor, even half the splendor, it would be amazing. I always look at the idea that I, I would think that a park would survive well in our area just because we have so many attractions and people, as you said, they go out and they, they make vacations of it. So you can spend some time at Montage Water Park, you could spend time at Steamtown National Historic Site, at the Trolley Museum, at so many, go see a baseball game. There's so many attractions in Northeastern PA that a family can spend a few days here and go to an amusement park as right. well. Um, but I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you a question. So what's your favorite amusement park? And all your years of experience and the people that you've spent time with and these national uh, groups associated with amusement parks, what is your favorite amusement park? Wow. Uh, that, that's, a <laughs> that's a loaded question that I was not expecting. But I, I'm going to say... Hershey Park. Hershey Park. Hershey Park. Is there a reason particularly why? Because of just how many different style and types of rides that they have. I, I really like Hershey Park. I think it's great. I think if you were to take someone who was not really a roller coaster fanatic, but they wanted to be, but they were afraid, you would take them to Hershey Park. And you could go from the mildest to the wildest all in the same day. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a great park. You but surprised I, me with, with that answer, but. I, I, I surprised me too. I would have expected Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio, which is always rated as one of the top yeah. amusement parks. Your thoughts on Cedar Point? 
it, it's a great park. It is really a great park. It has everything and it has a beautiful location on Lake Erie. Concerned me a little when people kept asking what ocean it was. <laughs> but I mean, they, I mean, they have everything. You know, you can go up 300 feet, you can go up 426 feet, or you could stay down on the ground, whatever you like. They do still have, you know, a nice old style sky ride where you sit in the gondola and go across for transportation. It, it's, it's great. I've, I've been in planes flying over Ohio and looking down and you could see the causeway and you could see Cedar Point. I've seen the fireworks at night from an airplane. So it, it, it's, it's pretty spectacular. But I think it's really hard to just pick a favorite park because now I'm thinking, well, I love Knobles because I could be there in an hour. I don't have to pay to get in. And, you know, to go outside of Pennsylvania, we have a Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. What a fantastic park, themed to all the holidays. Very family, very family oriented, family owned. And if the owner catches you saying a bad word, she yells at you. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great park. I, I've just, I've been to so many, it's really hard to say. It, it's hard to say, it's hard to narrow down. And that's why I think if anything came to this area, I would absolutely love it because there's just so many different aspects of a park to love. It's really hard to just pick one park, one ride, one ass. It's, it's hard. It's hard when you love so many things about them. Well, I want to thank you, Andrea, for being our guest today with all the information on amusement parks, a little brief history of our local amusement parks, and telling our viewers what's outside of Northeastern PA with amusement parks. So there's so many out there to enjoy and hopefully when the pandemic situation quiets down, hopefully everyone will have a chance to get out there and enjoy all those wonderful amusement parks and see all those wonderful rides and, and experience the enthusiasm that you have for the amusement parks. And uh, maybe someday we'll see that local amusement park brought back to Northeastern Pennsylvania. Thank you again for being our guest, Andrea. I'm Bob Savakanis. And tune in again to, an, in a nutshell, at a future date. Thank you. <laughs>